that rose to the occasion, met the moment, represented the best, the very best our country has to offer. And quite frankly, they deserve so much better than this and better than to have Joe Biden you know, look down and check his watch during the dignified transfer of remains over the weekend. Joining me now, the two gold star fathers. They lost their sons in last week's attack. Mark Schmitz is the father of Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz and Darren Hoover, the father of Staff Sergeant Darren Hoover Jr., who went by the name of Taylor. Let me start with you, Mark, if I may. Um, your son was sent back to Afghanistan to assist with the evacuation efforts. He said it's something he always wanted to do. I never have seen a young man train as hard as he did to be the best soldier he could be. He went back just for this mission. Explain. Yes, he did. Um, first, I, I, I just want to say that, that Jared has uh, exemplified just so, so much that any man could ever strive for and made me so proud uh, to watch him undertake this uh, this endeavor and going into the Marine Corps. And he uh, completed his boot camp, uh, went to Jordan, was excited about that, and was constantly looking to do more and was given that opportunity. Yeah. First, I want to say to both of you, if I may, as a parent, you know, I mean, nobody can understand the loss um, that both of you have gone through. Um, I can't imagine the pain that both of you are living through, and I'm very sorry about that. Mark, you met with Biden over the weekend. How did that go? Well, initially, I wasn't going to meet with him, um, but then I felt I owed it to my son to uh, at least have some words with him about how I felt. And uh, uh, it, it didn't go well. Um, he talked a bit more about his own son than he did my son, and I, that didn't sit well with me. Your son was a, a hero. I can't imagine the pain. I really can't. Darren? You're said about your son, he had the biggest heart in the world, and no parent, and I, as a parent, I think every parent watching right now understands this, no parent should have to bury their sons or daughter. It's not supposed to work that way. He was scheduled to return home on September the 15th and retire and marry his fiance, Nicole. I can't imagine how you're feeling today. You know, it, it's, it's the absolute worst feeling in the world. Um, having having them be away for so long and doing the job that they, they all love, there's no doubt about it. Um, being a Marine it, to these guys is everything. And having this happen, That's how I refer to him. Yeah, you, you chose not to meet with President Biden. I don't know if you want to comment on that. And I'd like to know, when I saw Biden look at his watch, I was literally like, you you got to be kidding me. Because all of this, to me, was preventable. Because we saw them on the march. You know, we, we had April, May, June, July to extradite everybody and our equipment. We didn't do it. There's no excuse to make for this. Why did you choose not to meet with the president there? For exactly the reasons you just gave. Um, we we said absolutely not. We didn't want to. We didn't want to deal with him. We didn't want to. We didn't want him anywhere near us. Um, we as a family decided that that was the way it was going to be. Um, in reference to the checking of his watch, that didn't happen just once. That happened on every single one that came out of that airplane. It happened on every single one of them. They would release the salute, and he looked down at his watch on every last one. All 13, he looked down at his watch.
It's graceful. As a father, you know, disgusting. Seeing that and the disrespect and hearing from his former uh, leaders, one of his master sergeants said exactly what you just said that this was avoidable, that they left them over there, they had them over there and let them down. And that, that we can't have that. It, it can't happen ever again. We also abandoned Americans. Americans now are on their own. We left them behind. Mark, you want to comment on the watch incident? You noticed the same thing? Yes, I did. Uh, I actually leaned into my son's mother's ear and I said, I swear to God, if he checks his watch one more time, and that was only probably four times in, um, I, I couldn't I couldn't look at him anymore after that, just considering especially the time and why we were there. It was, uh, I found to be the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen. I, I know there are no words that any commentator or host could express that's going to take your pain away. Um, but I can tell you, this audience shares in your anger and shares in a deep appreciation and thankfulness and sadness at an unnecessary loss of life, I believe, in this case. And we'll be praying for all of you, your families, these incredible young men that you raised that made this country the greatest country on earth. They make the country great. There are some leaders that don't make the country great. They did. Our thoughts and prayers are with you both. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Okay, now, after hearing these harrowing stories and hearing from these great American families, you ask yourself, where was the empathy from Mr. Timetable, Joe Biden? Where's the sense of urgency when they started moving up? We keep showing the map in April, May, June, July. Where's the accountability? Because over the weekend, Biden even refused to take any questions on Afghanistan and said, oh, he's not supposed to take any questions. Not allowed. Take a look. I'm not, I'm not supposed to take any questions, but go ahead. Mr. President, on Afghanistan? I'm not going to answer yes, then. Can you get the television? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. What a piece of shit. All right, Joe, you're the president of the United States of America. Who, who are these people that keep telling you you're not allowed to take questions or they told me to go to this person and they told me to go to that person? And it gets even worse as Biden had yet another appalling, incoherent, baffling moment uh, appearing completely lost yet again during a briefing earlier today. This is now officially... It's not a joke, as I said a while back. I can't joke about it anymore. It's so bad. Look at this. I'm here. Uh, uh, the FEMA director is on. Uh, uh, the FEMA director, Chris Walsh, she, she's on. And I'm here with uh, with my senior advisor and uh, boy who knows Louisiana very, very well, man, and, and New Orleans, and, and uh, Cedric Christman. All right. I, now, uh, get so back down in the basement, uh, fool. Uh, who are we going to next? Is go, you, you are, I, I understand, Gov, you're not uh, on video, but you are on the telephone. So, Gov, fire away. Is, uh, is, is Mayor Control? Mayor Control, are, are you on? I don't, I don't think she was able to get connected. I don't think so, Mr. President, but we have Cynthia Lee. Shay. Oh, okay. Good reaction. Eric Trump was with us. You know, Bernie Sanders is older, but he's sharp as a tack. I mean, the guy's on his game. Your dad, he's not even near the age, but your dad has more energy than a thousand men that I know. I mean, I've never met anybody on his game. He was on this program, unscripted, you know, 35 minutes the other night. The week before, 40 minutes. I looked at this, this, this uh, a while back, I said, I can't even joke about it anymore, because it's not funny. And now Americans are dying, and now Americans have been left behind enemy lines. Something your father, you might send out mean tweets, your own father would never allow happen. Lack of credibility 
Deshaun that we've lost in the world is just, it's unthinkable. It's truly, truly unthinkable. And when you watch a second clip, you realize exactly why they will not allow Biden to answer any questions. Because he can't get through a sentence without stuttering, without messing up, without making a fool out of himself. And it's tragic. What is he getting right? Yeah, I mean, and I'll answer the question, nothing. He's not getting anything right. He's not getting a border right. He's not getting Afghanistan right. He can't go to Dover. One of the most sacred grounds, the amount of time that my father spent on that tarmac at 2 o'clock in the morning, greeting fallen soldiers coming back from war zones, coming off of those C-17s in caskets draped with American flags and the guys checking his watch, it's embarrassing for a country. It's an absolute disgrace. It would never happen from Trump. Frankly, it wouldn't have happened from any other president. But the media lets him get away with it, and it's disgusting. And uh, it's got to stop, Sean. It's got to stop. You know, I I look at your father's plan. He was going to keep a ground air force base. Your father's plan was based on conditions on the ground. Your father's plan was also rooted in. We took out Baghdadi, Baghdadi's associates, the Al Qaeda leader in Yemen. We took out Soleimani, and we took right. out living Adam Schiff out of the also, uh, out of the Taliban. And if you dare, don't follow every dot, every dotted I, cross T, comma, and period. I will blow you back into uh, the Stone Age. That was your father's deal. That's not the deal that that was executed by Joe Biden. My father dropped the Moab on the top of a mountain and took out a terrorist camp comprised of thousands and thousands of people. That's the mother of all bombs, Moab, right? Took off the entire top of the mountain. And guess what? They really quickly figured out that Donald Trump wasn't playing around, that America wasn't going to be messed with, they weren't going to be disrespected. It's called peace through strength. Even if all the soldiers had evacuated from Bagram, they still wouldn't have done what they were doing because they know that Donald Trump would have been carpet bombing that country by now. And my father wasn't a guy who believed in conflict. He wanted to get American soldiers out of Afghanistan, but he would not have put up with that nonsense. No different than the way that he went after Soleimani. He sent a Reaper drone, right, with a Hellfire missile to take out one of the most evil terrorists anywhere in the world. And guess what? China was watching that, and Russia was watching that, and North yeah, Korea was watching that. Yeah, you're damn skippy. That's called American strength. And unfortunately, you're under damn this skippy. Island, America has no strength. We're being embarrassed every single day, Sean. And when you see 600,000 weapon systems left on the ground, when you see 78,000 vehicles that we left there, Humvees and tanks, when you look at 208 aircraft, Black Hawk helicopters, I mean, what are we doing? They're walking around with American night vision glasses, they're walking around with American sniper rifles. Have we lost our minds? That can't yes. happen. I mean, we've armed our biggest adversary in the world. I mean, a child could figure out that that was a bad idea. A child. Who is running this government? Why is the Pentagon allowing this to happen? We need Donald Trump today more than we've ever needed him before. Because, by the way, Afghanistan is right next to another country. And guess what? You know, Pakistan, they are a nuclear force. And God forbid, God help us all if one of those weapons ever falls in the hands of... Um, of these zealots, it's going to be a really, really bad day for um, for the Western way of life, and we better pray that that never happens, and we better pray that America gets its act together, and then we start getting real leadership in Washington, D.C. Can't say it any better, Kurt. Thank you. Still no accountability from Team Biden, no honesty about just why this went so wrong so fast. Where are the firings? Here with reaction, outnumbered co-host Kaylee McEnany is with us, and Ari Fleischer. Ari, I, mm. we're now at the point, you even tweeted, incoherent, mumbling, bumbling, stumbling. This guy can't get through a, a simple press conference. We've got a problem. If, if we're now going to be honest. Everybody can see it. Beautiful. The man is a cognitive mess. How does he stay in this job? Well, it's because of our Constitution. Our Constitution doesn't allow us to have these type of elections they do in England when you have a lack of confidence in the leader. We're, we're stuck with the people's choice unless he resigns from office and then we have Kamala Harris. But the midterm oh, yeah, elections the 25th are coming, Amendment. Sean, that's America's great. Well, that has to be invoked by the Biden cabinet, so I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but the midterm elections are America's corrective course for how there democracy you go. speaks. And I think it's highly likely Republicans will be in the House and in the Senate. But Biden still is in charge of foreign policy. And that's the problem, because we're subject to his judgment. 
And I think Eric asked the right question. What has Joe Biden done right? And the answer to that is nothing. Everything he has touched Learn that done goddamn mask. And that's what the American people are going to have to judge. That ain't right. I was watching a, a Nat Geo 9-11 special last night, and you were on it in that room next to the classroom where President Trump was informed America's under attack. Um, you need a leader at moments like this. Kaylee. Yeah, that's right. Look, I just watched your interview with Mark and Hello. Jared, those two gold star dads. My heart goes out to them both. Um, what they said should strike fear in the heart of every American. So what they said at base is this, is they talked about President Biden checking his watch. What that said to me is what I was picking up from a communication standpoint as a former press secretary this week, and that was this. Our commander-in-chief is not compassionate as he's been built. And take he's her in the bushes. He, he's callous. He's not caring. He is callous at base. That is what this man is. I watched his ABC interview with George Stephanopoulos, and he said when asked about Afghans falling off airplanes, that was four or five days ago, he said no one is being killed. This was after many Afghans were killed. We know some of the human remains found in a wheel. And his press secretary, 48 hours prior to the attack, where 13 servicemen lost their lives, said this was a success. And that was after Afghans died. This was after it was known to anyone with common sense that Americans would be left in this country stranded. This is a, an administration that we have to deal with for the next three plus years. It's horrific because we have a commander in chief, and I'm sad to say this, Sean, it really saddens me to say he simply does not care. Yeah, great commentary, both of you. Thank you, Kaylee. Thank you, Ari Fleischer. When we come back, Biden left Americans behind. Sarah Carter has exclusive details on that story, and you meet some retired Green Berets who worked hard to save American lives. Here to have. Okay.